Right, John, you're the only person to play in both of Cheltenham's previous power finals, 2002-2006. We'll start off with the first one, and you hadn't been at the, at the club very long, had you, when you came in, and brilliant start for you. Yeah, I did. I came in and gate crashed it, really. Um, Lincoln were in, in financial turmoil, and they needed to get rid of a few players, and, and Steve came in, um, and I think there was 12 games to go over the normal season, um, and I kind of thought we were going to go up automatically. I think everyone else did as well. Um but it, it wasn't to be, but it worked out even better. We got the playoffs and um, that made it 15 games with the with the three playoff games as well. So, uh, no, it was brilliant. I couldn't have wished for a better start and uh, it just cemented my decision to, to come, really. Yeah. What, what are your memories of the semis? Because it, it, obviously it's the best way to go up if you're successful, but the nerve-wracking games it must have been against Hartlepool, especially when it went to penalties. Yeah, because it's, it's all or nothing and uh, the Hartlepool games were tough. We... Uh, if we're being honest, they probably shaded both games. Um, we managed to get uh, two draws, two one-all draws, uh, with a couple of good goals, equalisers. But uh, we were behind in both games, and uh, and a nerve nerve-wracking penalty shootout as well. So um, it could have gone either way, but we were we got that bit of luck that you sometimes need, and uh, yeah, we uh, we got through to the final, and, and thankfully won that quite comfortably in the end. Yeah, you weren't sort of known for being prolific during your career, but you scored <laughs> on your debut, didn't you? And you scored yeah. a good goal against Oxford, and you scored in the final as well. So you goal scoring at Cheltenham started well. It started well, yeah. Uh, first fifteen games, I scored three goals, um, which was un- unheard of for me. I'd have probably scored three in the previous three or four seasons at Lincoln, um, but I just kind of Steve encouraged me to get forward a little bit more, and I was breaking from midfield. And when you've got Tony Naylor and, and Jules up front, you get little nod downs, and, and Tony was quite clever with his little layoffs and things like that. So you, you got opportunities a lot more. So the final came along, Millennium Stadium. What was what was the build up like? Because you you stayed in one of the FA Cup final hotels, didn't you? Yeah, um, San Pierre, I think it was. Um, you want to speak to Shane Duffy? He's got an interesting story about staying <laughs> there. But um, yeah, we stayed at San Pierre, which was great. We stayed. I don't know whether we stayed one or two nights before the final. I can't quite remember. I know we stayed after as well and had a bit of a party. Um, but it was great, great preparation. We trained up there on the golf course, and. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Just everything about it was it was like building up for an FA Cup final for uh, for lower league players really. And uh, when we pulled in, there was a sea of red and white everywhere, and the support was great from Cheltenham. And uh, it was brilliant. The performance was great, and it was uh, the pitch was lovely, and a nice sunny day. And to cap it off with a goal and to finish it off was was fantastic. Yeah, one of the first things I remember about the game is Martin Devaney scoring, and then running to the empty side of the stadium and then yeah. a couple of minutes later they'd equalise so it yeah. all happened very quickly didn't it? Well was funnily enough Yates he absolutely hammered him for running over towards the empty stands after the goal and Martin said he didn't know why he did it, it just it, the emotion just took over and he didn't know what he was doing really he took his shirt off to show his uh, show his body off his physique off and uh, he got a bit of stick for that as well but yeah we I think we were still celebrating and concentration had completely gone we were all over excited and Paul Hall, um, who I bumped into actually a couple of weeks ago and had a chat about it with, he, he just broke and we just seemed to part. And It was a great goal from his point of view, but from our point of view, it was pretty bad defending really. And you've got to make sure you concentrate after you score, that's the lesson learned there. Yeah. Did Steve Cottrell hammer a few people at half-time for that or was he, was he alright? I, I can't remember, um, I really can't remember what he said at half-time to be honest. Uh, um, no, I, I honestly, he might have done, I, I just can't remember. Yeah, and but, then Jules obviously made it 2-1. He'd been scoring goals for fun that season. Yeah, he? yeah he was banging him in right, left and centre and it just that was probably the easiest one of the lot for him. I can't remember. There was a bit of a scramble, I think, and a bit of a lucky deflection just fell back to him and he just slotted it into an open net. Yeah, so. and then the pressure was off a little bit. Um, I think Neil Grayson came on, didn't he? Hit the mm. bar and then you, you tied it up with a, with a nice finish. Yeah, it was a, a good build-up actually. I think Mike Duff's cleared one out of defence with a big hoof and I think Lee Williams got it down and played it inside to Tony Naylor. He's found Grace with a great ball. He's coming from the left-hand side and he's absolutely smashed one, I think, from about 25 yards. It would have been hell of a goal if it had gone in. Um, and luckily it just it came out nice and um, just bent, bent it in past Turley. Yeah, what what are your memories of the post match celebrations and well the final whistle going and then lifting the eighty lifting the trophy I think with Banksy didn't he? Yeah, just relief, um, relief that we'd we'd gone all that way and we'd won. I think you looked at the Russian players, particularly on the videos after and stuff, and you can see what it means. And they've they've had a long hard season and got to a big cup final and they don't even get a, a medal or. But it's all about winning anyway. I mean, you don't really want runs up medals, but um, they just it's just a long hard season that's been for nothing really yeah. um, now it was brilliant great celebrations after 
um, and it, you know it meant the world to everyone and, and Cheltenham getting to the highest level that they'd ever been so uh, it was great to be a part of it yeah. How quickly did you find out that Steve Cottrell was off after that game? Um, again, I can't quite remember. Was it quite soon that he went after that? Well, I think he I knew. Think we kind of, yeah, I think we kind of expected that. I mean, we knew for, I think, probably the previous two or three years, there was always teams, you know, he was getting linked with jobs because he'd done such a fantastic job at Charlton. Um, I think it was only a matter of time and he probably chose his time quite well there because, we, you know, I've said it before, the team was coming towards the end of its you know, in terms of the age of the team. There's a lot of older players, mid-30s, who'd done superb to be still playing at that level, to be honest. But a lot of them had come, in, come into the league football quite late. So um, they managed to prolong their careers a little bit. And, you know, Neil Grace and Chris Banks, Lee Howells, all those players, and, and maybe Bucky as well. So, uh, Yatesy, Neil Howarth, really, a really old team, to be honest. Yeah. And I think Steve maybe saw that that might have been one, uh, one bridge too far the next season. Yep, so three managers on and you were the only survivor and it was a completely different style of team as well, wasn't it, in 2006 when you went up under John Ward? Yeah, very young, very raw, um, a lot a lot more legs probably in the team but maybe not as much in terms of cool heads and people who could know how to win a game with their heads rather than their athletic, athleticism. Um, Jamie Victory was obviously still involved that season but he missed out through injury in the final um, so he was one of the ones who's been through it all really. Um, he was like I say unfortunate to miss out in the final otherwise he should have played in both really um, but Craig Armstrong and Mickey Bell came in and, and did a great job to see us through but um, sorry I forgot your question <laughs> just the, the difference <laughs> between the two teams yeah really, but... I think it was the legs really we were young we were young hungry um, loads of legs in the team you know Brian Wilson Ashley Vincent JJ Melligan could run all day um, myself um, you know, we just we just had loads of athletes, really. Yeah, and you had the great cup run, which Cheltenham have obviously had this year. Um, we got through to play Newcastle in the fourth round, and did that give everyone sort of a lift, through, ready for the second half of the season? Because you pushed yeah, on well, the, didn't you? Great attention, you know, the the attention that you get from the press and 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 the locally and nationally for a game like that, TV cameras, um, big games, and they, they help you prepare really for the the, the more big games that come along. You, you kind of you you're used to them a bit more. Yep. I mean, even going up to Chester, I know it's a probably a relatively small club, but it was a huge game in terms of we knew what was at the end of it. So that that was a pressure game. So to go up there and win was big. Um, and then the, the performance in the Newcastle game, as much as anything, gave us confidence. Yep. And the second half of the season was, you know, we went strength, from strength to strength. Yeah, Wickham away, you gave yourself a great start, didn't you? The first goal and then Steve Garner made it 2-0. Mm. looked like you were firmly on course for the final. Yeah, again, we, we came under a lot of pressure against Wickham early on. But I think we settled down into the game and uh, I managed to score just before half-time and uh, against the run of play, really, I think, again. Um, but it was a good time to score and, and we went into the second half and played pretty well, actually, then. We, we settled right down. Steve Guinan's put us 2-0 up with probably 15, 20 minutes to go. Cruising, playing well. And then right at the end, we've come under a little bit of pressure and Tommy Mooney smashed one in and opened it right up again for the, for the second leg at Wadham Road. Yeah, and all I remember about that game is defence, you know, everyone having to get behind the ball and just work for 90 minutes to keep him out, but he did it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how. We were <laughs> under the cosh probably for 80 minutes out of that game. I can't remember. I think we, we created one or two decent chances. I think Steve had a good chance. But, you know, how we, how we managed to keep a clean sheet that night is credit to the whole team. But, you know, the boys at the back and, and Higgsy and goal were, were superb, to be honest. Yeah, and then Grimsby, you hadn't beat the club had never beaten Grimsby, and you'd lost them twice that season. And obviously, they were the big favourites, weren't they, for the final? Yeah, they they just missed out. They probably they were one of the teams that you thought were nailed on for automatic promotion all season. Really, they were big, strong, physical. Um, Reddy was on fire that season, and um, you know they probably went into the playoffs gutted that they'd not gone up, whereas we went into the playoffs on in great form. You know, really excited about it and. Um, yeah, we, we we managed to turn them over and I think deservedly so in the final. But uh, again, we were massive underdogs. No one fancied us at all. And uh, But we you know we, we always fancied ourselves in the dressing room. And We probably played a slightly different game. We probably played more football in the final than we did it during the rest of the season. Or we tried because we, we, our natural game, which was a bit of a mixture, long and short, didn't quite work against them during the season. So we, 
you know, Coyote won't thank me for saying it, but John John left him out and um, brought Steve Gillespie in after a long injury and and uh, just we just tried to play into feet a little bit more rather than in behind and it, it worked. Yeah, I remember you opening them up a few times in the first half and missing a couple of chances, mm. but when when the goal did actually come, it was uh, it was a cross, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. The, the deadlock um, got broke by a cross, but um, that's all history now. And uh, it's like Steve said, he just put it in there and and it's gone in and he's he's got his goal in the final, but. Uh, yeah, we had two good chances early on. Steve was one. Um, I think that came from a defensive mistake from yeah. the big lad Jones. I think nodded one back a bit short. He'd had a great season, but he had a bit of a nightmare early on in that game. Um, and Steve sort of chested it and volleyed it and the keeper took it comfortably. And then I think Steve Gillespie before that had gone through. Grant had pinged a great ball, half volley, cut across it with his left foot and it went straight in behind for... for uh, it might have been a mistake from Jones again, actually. I don't know whether he flicked it or didn't quite, he misjudged it. And Steve, just I think his second touch just went a bit too far and the keeper managed to, to make a save. So sometimes you think, you know, if you don't take them chances, yeah. you, you don't get, you know, you don't get the win, but we we deserved it. We deserved it that yeah. day. When you went 1-0 up and then Grant got the penalty, mm. you know, I think it was Curtis Woodhouse, wasn't it? Should have, yeah. should have been sent off. Should have been sent off. He admitted himself to Grant afterwards, I think. But again, it was great football that opened him up. I think uh, a one-two between Grant and, and Coyote when he came on a sub. Grant's gone through, gone round the keeper, he's just going to slot it in, I think. It was on his right-hand side, which might have made it a bit more difficult, but yeah, Woodhouse would, would had to go. But we again, we had a bit of luck in the first half. I think Keynesy brought down Parkinson and we were quite lucky not to get away with giving away a penalty there. Yeah, it wasn't the best of pitches for that one, was it, compared to O2? Awful. It was bobbling around. Yeah, I think the, the day before, I think Swansea, was it Swansea-Barnsley the day before? And uh, Grimsby actually went to watch that game and uh, we chose to stay at home in the hotel and I think that was a good decision. Sometimes I think you go to big occasions like that, <clears throat> it can be draining just watching. Um, and we, we chose to stay at home and played a bit of table tennis in the hotel and things and relaxed. And Yeah, we heard that their boys had been to the game and I, I think that was a good decision by the, the staff for us to do that. But um, again, I've, I've lost track again. Where were we? Just the pitch. Yeah, the pitch was... Awful because the, the rain the day before with the Barnsley Swansea game, yeah. Um, I think it just poured down the whole game and it just got turfed up. And it was there wasn't much grass on it to be honest. It was disappointing, especially with us wanting to go and play football, yeah. And Grimsby being a little bit more direct, but um, we managed to we managed to get the ball down and play. And, and like I say, we uh, we thoroughly deserved it in the end, yeah. Craig Armstrong had to go off with a sort of nose spattered across his face, but you also got a, a cut above your yeah, eye, didn't you? That game, yeah, it was funny that because well, Craig's weren't he, he was. Bad one actually, wasn't it? I've got a picture of him downstairs with a massive gash down his nose, but it, um, it was a fair swap. I think we, we joked about it afterwards. He, he got he took a bad injury there, and him and Reddy clashed heads. But for them to lose Reddy, who'd been their talisman all season, was uh, you know we we'd take that all day long. Was to lose Craig and them to lose Reddy. Well, thank me for saying it, but uh, it, it, that contribution could have been a, a major one. So we've got Craig to thank for uh, for doing that for us. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, mine was nothing really. It was just a little nick that kept bleeding and I had to go off, I think, a couple of times to get it patched up. But when I actually got that elbow, I got a dead leg at the same time. I got a knee in the thigh. So I, I was limping around and everyone thought I'd, I was limping because I had a bad eye. <laughs> but I'd actually got a knee in the thigh and uh, I, I was struggling at half time. I, I was on the exercise bike trying to keep it running because I, I was really struggling with it. But I just, games like that, you can get through with the adrenaline and uh, yeah, it was a bit stiff after, but we didn't care. Yep. Great scenes at the end. And how does it feel to lift the trophy as captain? Amazing. That was uh, that's all I wanted. All you know, especially when we got to the semis, it was like I mean, I could be because I've seen Yatesy do it years before, and I just remember thinking, oh, that'd be great one day to be to be doing what they're doing there, him and Banksy, and uh, it, was, it was brilliant, dream come true. You know, lifting it, all the family there, all the supporters, and uh, a long hard season, and uh, yeah, it was something you'll never forget. Really yep. proud moment. The, the open top bus tour was a bit wet, wasn't it, that year, but still a good day. <laughs> yeah, really wet. I missed the other one because I was on holiday. I booked my holiday before I even came to Cheltenham for the first one, 2002, which was a much better day, I gather. But, uh, this, you know, the the local you know public came out and, and supported us, no, you know, no matter what the weather. Pitville pump rooms was packed and the streets were just rammed. So, it's, it's yeah, it's brilliant and experiences like that and you'll never forget. And, 
you know, the Cheltenham public really got behind us as well. Yeah, I know you said you didn't watch the game the day before the final, but you'd been to have a look around the stadium, hadn't you? Do you think that was important yeah. just to get get used to the surrounding? Yeah, I think we did that with Steve as well. Uh, I think a lot of clubs do it. Just, yeah, familiarise yourself with the dressing rooms and, and the pitch. People might laugh about think little things like that, but it's, it's always nice to be a little bit familiar. And Sometimes if you just turn up on the day and some of the younger lads would have seen the ground and it's starting to fill up, that could have been quite daunting for them. But uh, I think it just lets you know where you're going to be, look at the ground, get all that out of the way, and then you can just concentrate on the football when you get there. So I think it was probably about a week or so before we actually visited, or four or five days before we visited the ground. So I think it's good to get that out of the way and, uh, like I say, just concentrate on the football then. Yeah, so that was your third promotion from what is now League 2, wasn't it? Because mm. you went up once with Lincoln and twice in the playoffs. And, yeah. You know, Is the playoffs the best way to do it? Well, oh, without a doubt, it was... Funnily enough, all three games have been the last game of the season. We clinched it on the last day at Lincoln at home and I think they crammed about 12, 11, 12,000 in the ground that day, which is probably more than it should have had in. But uh, it was brilliant. But the, the, the cup final nature of the playoffs, is, it just makes it that bit more special and to get a trophy at the end of it as well. I mean, second place, third place, don't get that. Um, I think to go up as champions is obviously what, what everyone would like to do. But... Um, Playoffs is the way forward if you want a great day out for the supporters, board, players, families, everybody. It's uh, it's the best way to do it and hopefully Cheltenham can do it again this year. Yeah, and uh, I know you've been following their progress this season and watched the the semi-finals on, on TV. What, what what do you think of those? Oh, thoroughly, com- completely different to our two semi-finals. I think Cheltenham, both games, deserve to win without a doubt. Um, second Second leg... Well, I watched the first leg live and uh, I went down with Shane and um, we talked about it after and we thought Elliot was superb at the back that day. Real real strong performance from him. Uh, Summerfield, we thought, was fantastic the whole game. And uh, them two were the standout players, but great performance from everyone. McGlashan's pace obviously caused problems. Um, the second leg, Brownie was absolutely out of his skin money, I think. They weathered the storm, and once they'd done that, they uh, they deserved to come through again. They got the goals, great goals, packed, great free kick. Um, but again, Brownie, uh, for me to see Brownie doing that, as he came as a young lad as well under John Ward, and he's had to bide his time, and he's had a tough season. He's been in and, in and out of the team, and uh, he's got on with it, not complained. And it's, I think Mark said after it might have made him a better, a better keeper through character and and what kept what kept his head down, kept working hard, and he's. He's got a Wembley final at the end of it, so I'm chuffed for him particularly. Yeah, do you, do you describe yourself as a bit of a? I know you're a Leeds fan through and through, but a bit of a Cheltenham fan. On yeah, some days I think, like of that. course. I mean, after spending sort of what seven or eight years at the club, and you know, having two great days out like that, and the big games, best years of my career without a doubt. And living in the area as well, you just you get to know all the supporters, all the all the staff that are at the club, the board. You know, when you've been there so long, and I obviously still have a. Uh, a few of the boys down there and, and backroom staff that I played with, played under. Um, yeah, without a doubt, I'll always will be. I can't see myself moving on now. So, uh, well, I say I'm a Leeds fan. I, I can't remember the last time I watched them. But, um, yeah, Cheltenham, big place in my heart. And um, I really want them to do well. And j- just for everyone down there, Mark, Neil, Wezo, Bucky, Russ Milton, all the backroom staff. And the board down there, and uh, like I say, some of the players that I know as well. Um, yeah, big, big day for them on on Sunday, and I'll be there cheering them on. Yeah, I was going to ask if you got your tickets. Yeah, not not sorted them out yet, but we'll get there. Um, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll Just, be there. Obviously, because because they've got to the playoff final again, people and there's been comments made by Mark Yates himself about how good this team is. There's bound to be comparisons between the three playoff winning teams. How would you compare? Well, get your thoughts on the midfield first because they they've got a lot of credit this season for their performances. Yeah, and rightly so. I think I've 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 watched it from afar for most of the season because I was playing myself at Shortwood. Um, so I've sort of seen I've only seen the Bradford game and the two playoff games live. Um, so unfortunately, I haven't seen Penn play too much apart from coming on in the set, uh, second leg and doing really well. But I know about him anyway, and that he was at Kiddy Remark, and obviously I was at Kiddy after him, and he he was very highly regarded there and at Burton, I think as well. And uh, he came on in that second leg and showed what he was about and, and lifted the team, I think. Yep. Um, the other two, um, Summerfield, like I said earlier, was magnificent. 
Um, and then Pat, you know, the, the goal he scored showed his quality in the in the second leg as well. And um, I think if you if you want to play football, he, he's your man. He's going to get on the ball and and make things happen. And uh, Summerfield, I think he's up and down, and he he can do a bit of everything. I think so. Uh, them three have been been superb. But again, the whole team. I've you know Shane's told me that Bennett's been superb at the back. Uh, great captain. Um, Butland came in and did well. And the lad at right back, John Batty, is it? Yeah. Apparently, he's been great as well. I've not seen too much of him, but the whole team, the whole squad, have done, done magnificent, much better than anybody could have ever expected. And uh, credit to Mark and, and Neil for for getting that team together. Yeah. Which one of the two you played in do you think was the was the better team, all round? I think in terms of footballing ability, I think the first one probably was. I think we. Um, but then the second team, like I said earlier, was a much more athletic team, probably more, I think that's what you get more these days, you get you get athletes, um, and I think that was a more old-fashioned team, a more old-fashioned football inside that won it without being particularly athletic. Um, but again, in the second team, you did, we, we had great footballers as well, to be honest, you know, Grant McCann, he's gone on to, to, to play at you know, Northern Ireland and, and Peterborough captain in them in a championship so we, we had good players as well but I think the first team was probably all around a little bit more football wise anyway but, yep. uh, and, it, and it probably proved it really we, we probably should have gone up automatically that year so uh, you said you were playing Shortwood earlier this season and they've got promoted haven't they now so yeah. uh, good news for them yeah great news I was, I was thrilled for them because I didn't get down there after my injury um, I had a lot going on off the pitch um, but um, spoke to John Evans the other day and congratulated him and yeah, they they've worked hard for that, and they've been they've been trying to get that for a few years now. So I'm really pleased, and um, hopefully if I can get myself fit, I'll be be back there next season. Yeah, and how's it going? It's uh, the Winchcombe School Sports Hub. Yeah, it's good. Good. We're quietening down a little bit on the pitch at the moment because all the teams are finishing training. Um, but we've got yeah, great facility up there that we that's available for anybody uh, yeah. any anybody watching um, to just give me a call or email, and we'll we'll sort them out and get them get them playing on a good pitch and. We've been lucky that um, you know it's been great for us to have Cheltenham up there. The first team have been up there when the weather's been bad, and they've loved it. And you know, hopefully that relationship can continue up there as well. Yeah. Just finally, what's your prediction for the Crew game? Because uh, the Crew have done the double, a bit like Grimsby did. So uh, hopefully yeah. history will repeat itself. I think there'll be goals actually. I saw the um, a little bit of the Crew South End game, and I saw the Leach Smith goal where he cut inside and rammed it in the bottom corner, and that was that looked pretty nifty. But uh, I think there'll be goals, and uh, I think it could be a big. Big exciting high scoring game to be honest. So I'll go, I'll take a three two Cheltenham I think. Right. Okay. Pretty. Cheers for right. this. Cheers.